For loops have changed a little in Swift 3 and are now exclusively for looping through arrays. And they're actually much better at doing that than while loops. Let me show you how they work. So let's have a simple array. And again, I'll just choose some random numbers. There we go. And then to loop through the numbers in our array, all we do is we create a new variable, which I'll just call number, but we can call whatever we like. So for number in array. And what that will do is loop through the array array and allow us to access each individual item in the array using the number variable. So we might want to, for example, print number. And that then gives us 8481. So you can see that's much neater and cleaner than using a while loop. So in looping through an array, I would definitely recommend using a for loop. If you're doing something else with your loop, then probably while is the best way forward. So a quick challenge then. Can you create an array with four names of friends or family and then loop through it and print hi there and then the name of each person. So imagine this is quite similar to printing the content of a tweet which might be stored within an array. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Best of luck, go for it. Okay, do you manage it? So let's start by creating our array. So I'll call it family members. And we're gonna have Rob, Kirsten, Tommy and Ralphie. Very simple, then we just loop through. So for family member in family members. We can use any variable name we like here, but using family member makes it fairly clear what's going on. And then we just print, hi there, add the family member and then a friendly exclamation mark on the end. Take a look, there we go. Nice and easy. What if though you want to change these values inside the array? Just changing the family member variable won't actually affect the array because this has just been extracted from the array. It's not actually part of the original array. So let's say again, we've got an array of random numbers. So I'll just call them numbers this time. There we go. And as before, let's say we want to add one to each of those numbers. This time we need to use a slightly more complicated for loop. And this time we use index comma value. So we're looking for two variables this time, not just one, which was effectively the value. This time we're looking for the index. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, and the value. And this time we want to take the array, so numbers, and make it enumerated, which is essentially spread it out into its components. And now we can use each of these, so index or value, to get either the location of each item or the value itself. So if we want to add one to each of the values, we can do that using numbers and then index plus equals one. And then let's just check by printing the numbers array again at the end. And of course, it's always good to get into the habit of using let rather than var, but it can let you down 
if you then decide you want to change the variable or the array later on. And there you go, you can see everything's one bigger now than it was before. Okay, so final challenge then. I'd like you to create a simple array containing the numbers 8, 7, 19, and 28. And then halve each of the values using a for loop. And there's a little sting in the tail here, so give it a go and you see if you can spot what makes this challenge a little trickier than it might appear. Good luck. All right, let's see how it goes. So this, I'm gonna to remember to use var rather than let, because I know this is gonna change. And I'll use my array as an array name. And let's start off with eight, comma seven, comma nineteen, comma twenty-eight. So there's my array. Then I use for index and value in my array enumerated and now I'm going to get my array index and set it equal to value divided by 2. So here I could use my array index again, but it's the same thing as value, but I need to use my array index here because I want to update the original value in the array, not just the temporary value variable that we've created here. Okay, so you might think that's all pretty good. But let's have a look at the result. So we should have 4, 3.5, 9.5, and 14. Let's take a look. Aha, but instead we get 4, 3, 9, and 14. So these two are wrong. So why is that? Well, it's because these were defined as integers. So when we halve them, they're still integers, so it rounds down to the nearest whole number. So there's a few ways around that. Probably the easiest way is to rather cheekily put a point zero at the end of each of these numbers, and then that will define them as doubles rather than integers. So when they're halved, we get the exact values. Another way of doing it would be to define the array separately as an array of doubles. And then if you do that and then set it equal to 8, 7, 19, 28, then you still get the correct values because these are doubles even though they happen to be whole numbers. All right, so I hope you managed to see through my challenge there. You'll be pleased to know that we're almost done with our Swift deep dive. We've got a couple of topics to look in some detail at before we go on to build our Is It Prime app. And the first of those is a fundamental programming idea, and that is of classes and objects. And we'll find out what they are and how they work in the next video.